Greetings. Um, did my own music today because <clears throat> Wi-Fi is dodgy. I couldn't play a song. <laughs> Dear, I'm on, on my mobile phone. I want to get that sorted out. Particularly if I do this, if there's another lockdown and I do this more often, or at all, right? I'm thinking, I've ordered a proper mic. Oh, professional. Um, I'll turn the phone landscape. <laughs> Because I had I thought it was just a laugh. Um, that would improve it, wouldn't it? But I don't want to do it yet. I don't want to improve it yet. <laughs> I want to save it. So it's spectacular. I go, oh, he's turned his phone the right way around. He's a professional. It's all smoke and mirrors. Um, I get a little light because soon it'll be dark at this time, won't it? If the pandemic carries on, and it will, because it's it's like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't really know how inconvenient it is for us. How are you? I'll do a few, oh look, at, I've got a scar. Look at that, battle scar. Do you know how I did that? Guess, right, okay, I'll, get, I'll narrow it down to two. Either I was fighting fascists on the street, right? <laughs> With a little bandana and everything, right? <laughs> park, park the Volvo, right? fighting fascists, or I was getting a tennis ball out of a privet hedge, which <laughs> it really hurt. Um, <laughs> it hurts anyway, getting a tennis ball. Well, let me explain, right, quickly. So um, we got a little place in the country and we had a tennis court, an all-weather court. It's the best thing I've ever bought, right? Um, it's basically all we use the house for. It's the, it's, <laughs> this tennis court costs millions. Right? So, but I thought I won't put a fence around it because it, it, it ruined the sort of garden. So it's just flat, right? And they built it and it goes straight to the grass and the trees. And it's lovely. But the downside of that is that obviously there's no fence to stop the ball. So they go into the bushes and, the, and you have to scrabble for them. So, so... That's, <laughs> is this first world problems? I had a terrible day. I was, uh, I was at my country estate. Uh, I had to get the bloody tennis ball from a privet hedge. Um, so yeah. How are you? Um, someone just said, admit it, you tried kissing a parrot. Hello from Tokyo. Hello, Seattle. God, look at you, Tokyo, Seattle, Maryland, um, Texas. I think Sundays is even bigger in America, isn't it? It's like half the people. New Jersey, is that because maybe Wednesdays it's, you're sort of at work and Sundays it's morning but you're off? Um, anyway, hello, St Albans, there you are. That's just down the road, up the road. Uh, I've got some questions. Again, right, I put up questions for about three minutes and I just got hundreds. So I choose enough and I try and be fair and I stress. I think, oh, what if I missed a cat or a dog's question? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I got, um, and uh, I, like, I've got a load of general questions. I've got... Things like, how do you cast for roles? How did you cast the people in Afterlife? How do I choose extras? How do I decide what extras get lines here and there? So I'll answer all those in one, one go. Um, well, nowadays I sort of cast the main cast myself in my head, even before I write it, because I've been around for 20 years and I know who's the best person for that, for that role and I can get them. Um, obviously, along with maybe eight to 10 main cast. There's always, you know, 60 small roles, which you don't cast um, sort of big actors for, because it's just not worth it, you know? They cost a lot more than maybe an actor. who might be just as good, but you haven't heard of, because you build up your, you know, your worth. So uh, I still have a casting director for those 
uh, you know, smaller roles and you, you talk to me say, oh, someone like this, someone like that, you know, uh, I want a 40 year old John Travolta type, you know. Um, so then you, you do all those and then extras, there's another agency because uh, they're background and um, you sort of do those as you go along. Like I say, I want three people walking down the road or I want a, a party, 50-50 um, male, female, um, and any extras that feature, like if it's someone you refer to, and they've got to be a type, you sort of look at the catalogue and you go, you know, um, I need a big fat guy with a beard. And they give you a choice of 10 fat guys with beards. So that's how you do it, and you sort of build it up. But nowadays, I sort of cast the main, you know, all the all the, the leads myself, because um, I've because I I've been around. In the early days, I didn't know anyone, so I had to audition for everything. Um, but that's rarer now. Uh, Stonewall Rockhaven, if that is your real name. Uh, in Afterlife Three, are you looking forward to filming with the dog again? Oh, I can't wait. Uh, and are you ready to get your testicles smashed by a giant paws? That happened about, I mean, half a dozen times. Just where, you know, you're, you're acting and, you know, if you say cut and uh, she's done a bit, she just walks off. But she doesn't really walk around testicles. She walks over them. So, <laughs> yes. Um, Claire. If your house was on fire and you could only save one item from being lost forever, what would it be? Oh, that's so difficult. Oh, that's mad. So it would be something that was obviously that couldn't be replaced. That's the point, isn't it? A work of art or a, or a gift or some sentimental value. Um, oh, I don't, I mean, that's, inc oh, that's so hard. But then again, antiques can't be replaced in a sense. There's no sentimental value. But they can't, some of them can't be replaced, if you know what I mean. Oh. I mean, that's, I mean, photographs. I haven't got many. I could have them scanned in, couldn't I? I could say, <laughs> If you don't count things that are practical, like a man, if I was writing a manuscript, that would be that. If it's just purely, it's just sentimental value or can't be replaced. Uh, oh, um, oh, Christopher Guest gave me one of his guitars that he used in Spinal Tap, um, which is not only worth an incredible amount, but is irreplaceable and. You know, that means, that really means something to me. So, uh, yeah, I'm sure there's other things I think of as well. But um, the guitar that Christopher Guest gave me for my 50th birthday, blown away. Mad, isn't it? I mean, that's too much. I want to say to him, that's too much. <laughs> that's... <laughs> cake, just give me a cake. That's crazy. I didn't know what, I didn't know what, you can't thank him enough, you know? Mad. Um, here he is, is gonna. Cheers. Oh yeah, um, now, right? Uh, the nice people at um, Beer Hunter who gave me this um, glass and I gave them a shout out. Now they're selling the glasses and a pound for every one you buy goes to a, an animal charity. We're saving dogs here, we're saving dogs. And of course, I'm drinking Street Dog. So, even though, as I say, even though this is absolute shite, <laughs> we are saving homeless dogs. Cheers. Um, Gunnar, would you want a David Brent Life on the Road tribute album with others putting their own twist on the songs before or after you die? Always before I die. I don't care about anything after I die. I don't want a posthumous award. Give it to me now. I want to. That's why I want. I want to give all my money away before I die, so I can see the look on their those little dogs' faces. 
And my friend's face is going, what, he gave it, he gave it to fucking dogs? I've been his mate for 50 years, and he gave all his fucking money to... <laughs> yeah. Someone should do that. I've got all these great ideas. I wish I had, like, someone, like a butler, who had all these ideas. I have great ideas, and I can't be bothered to do any of them. So, if someone could get together and do and replace the vocals on uh, uh, Life on the Road with, you know, pop stars, give it to the charity, right? Or just do your own versions, put it together, give it to charity, you got my permission, I wrote all the songs. Um, yeah, just do it. <laughs> just do it. Just don't bother me. There's a bit, there's a bit in The Simpsons where um, uh, Marge and Lisa and Maggie go away to a, a spa or something and they leave um, Bart and Homer um, <laughs> alone, right? And when they're in a day, it's, the house is a wreck, right? They're just both <laughs> asleep on pizza boxes, right? And Bart goes, oh, I was just eating junk. He goes, oh, Homer, he goes, what? He goes, can I go to the park? And Homer goes, do I have to do anything? And Bart goes, no. He goes, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's how I feel. People ask me for stuff. Can I, do I have to do anything? No, yeah, whatever. Um, Sandra says, who is your favourite classical composer? Vaughan Williams. Ray Vaughan Williams. Um, it's just beautiful. I think he sort of... I think he sort of invented the template that became sort of film score, almost. It was classical music, but it was very accessible and rousing and just beautiful and evocative. Um, yeah. Uh, I used... Uh, um, a piece on uh, um, Cemetery Junction. It's, uh, it's, it's beautiful. Check it out. Um, five Variants it is of Divas and Lazarus. Uh, Bella the Whippet. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Bear in mind that Bella the Whippet is a dog. This is Bella's question, right? This is funny. Right. Have you ever stuck your head out of a car window on a really windy day? <laughs> I, I don't think so, but I, well, maybe. I used to get car sick, and that used to make me feel better. Um, yeah, that used to make me sort of feel... I, I don't know, I'm still not, not sure what car... I don't think I get it anymore. Um... So, uh, yeah, I, I quite like... I mean, it doesn't have to be a windy day, does it, when you're doing 60 miles an hour? Um, so, uh, <laughs> thank you for your question there. <laughs> um, Mariam says, in the outtake scene of Derek, when you're eating the pickled onions, what made you lose it and then spray it everywhere? I just suddenly became conscious of the absurdity. I don't know why, it's one of those things where I'm just sitting there and I suddenly realise there's a film crew, right, and tens of thousands of pounds filming me going like that. And it just, I went, what the fuck are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it just suddenly it all came tumbling down. Um, Susie Hope uh, oh Nan passed away last night um, and could only hold her hand in full PPE at a and &E. oh um, she loved watching you on a Sunday she was concerned you only had one t-shirt um, if you could please raise your brew dog for Nan Margaret she would have loved that oh to Nan Margaret cheers Sad. Um, uh, Annabelle, uh, is there anything you don't like people asking you about? Perhaps things that are too personal or you find 
upsetting. Um, well, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't like that sort of gossipy stuff. I don't do sort of interviews like that. Um, but uh, only because it's like it's it's you know I don't I don't I don't care for it. I don't I don't know anyone anything or you know what I mean those clickbait things. Guess who's going out with? I don't give a fuck. Or guess what? So and so I don't give a fuck. See so and so secret to wait. I don't give a fuck. I don't want to. I don't want to know. It's like <laughs> it's good. so. Um, I don't. I don't. That bores me. Um, but I'm not. Yeah, I'm not worried about that sort of thing. I don't like. I don't like it when they ask me about other people and try and when they say, "Oh, what do you think of what so and so said?" I hate that because whatever I say, that's the headline. It's, it's usually Ricky Gervais slam so and so. I fucking have them. Right? It's their business. I don't. I so I don't do that shit. Even if someone says, um, oh, is there anyone you hate? I, I, even if there is, I go, no, no. Or what, uh, what do you think of this film? Even if it's a pile of shit, I go, oh, I, I haven't seen it. I'm not going to, I'm just not going to join in that bollocks. It's horrible. It's fucking boring. And look where we are because of it. Nasty fucking clickbait. People hating on each other for no reason. Um, so yeah, I don't like that. I don't like I don't like that sort of that sort of gossip and the mob rule shit joining in, kicking people when they're down. Um, Hunt of the Greyhound. Uh, Hi Ricky, thanks for all you do for animals. What is more annoying? Loud crisp crunching, chewing gum. Or excessively loud yawns. That's a that's a tough one, Hunter. P.S. Can you shout out to Celia Cross Greyhound Trust? Cheers, Celia Cross Greyhound Trust. Um, crisp crunching. Well, that's hard to avoid. No one can eat crisps quietly, can they? So I sort of give them a. a it's not. It's not fun. It's not fun. For me, <laughs> but okay, okay, you're eating crisps, right? Right. Um, chewing gum is inane, isn't it? That sort of thing. I, I can't stand it. Just people talking to you with a mouthful of gum and their mouth open as well. That's not. That's not normal. Don't do that. Why are you doing that? That's mental. Don't, why are you doing that? So I don't like that, and that can be helped. There is no fucking reason for that. Um, but again, it's not an annoying noise as, as but slurping. Oh, fucking slurping. I mean, the worst that is fucking disgusting is that people doing that. That's like, that's like a death sentence. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, uh, but mild, these are mild Mr. Me. These are, these are a warning or probation. Maybe a, a, a tiny amount of jail time. Um, excessive loud yawns. Yeah, no reason for that as well. I told someone off on a plane once. So we were taking off um, from New York. And I was on like a, it was in first class, right? I was in the... Uh, window seat, then there was two people there, and then Jane was sort of the other side there, where the, you know. And the bloke here, sorry, there's just a little aisle there, and the bloke here kept going, <laughs> so I looked the first time, I thought, okay, right. <laughs> right, okay, always two, right? Okay, now, okay, we haven't even taken off yet. Uh, did it again, a couple of people were looking round, and they were sort of looking round, but they got my, they caught my eye, because they're there, they can't see him, so they look round, and I, and I, and I was, oh, well, it was not me, right, so I knew other people could hear it, so I wasn't, and I it did it about five, and I made sure he wasn't, there was something wrong with him, right, but I don't know how I did that, <laughs> I'm not a doctor, <laughs> but, uh, uh, I gave him a quick assessment, that right, he's not mental, he's just fucking annoying. And uh, he was like a 60-year-old man with his wife, just read her. 
And after about the 15th one, right, he went, Ugh. I went, sorry, can you, um, can you yawn without all the uh, afterwards? And he went, oh. And then he didn't do it again. So he could help it. So he was just doing it for his own amusement, right? Then I thought, fuck, now I've got to, now I've got to sit next to him for seven hours. <laughs> Uh, so it's that one, I think. I mean, you can't. Uh, how can you ask people to not chew gum or eat crisps? Um, so yeah, that one. Uh, Kermit, not not this, not, not Kermit. Another, maybe it's another frog. I don't know. Is Kermit a real name? It is, isn't it? They didn't make that up, did they, for the Muppets? That is a name, isn't it? A real, well, all names are made up, aren't they? Um, I don't know. Uh, this is Kermit's question. A sober and reliable time traveller from 150 years in the future shows up at your door. You can ask him one question. What is it? Oh, oh God. That's great. Oh, that's great. What would I want to know? You'd end up being narcissistic, wouldn't you? You'd, you'd go something like, uh, is, is Afterlife still on Netflix? <laughs> I go, what's Netflix? I go, what do you mean, what's Netflix? I go, we just think of shit now. I go, what? I go, yeah, we don't bother. Well, there's no internet. I go, internet is, it's got a little, when you're born, they go, <laughs> and then, right. So what do you do? I go, the Beatles are still big. They're like, of course the fucking Beatles are still big. I go, I'm, I'm playing Let It Be now. I go, oh yeah? I go, yeah. I go, oh, good luck to you. Um, what would I... It's <laughs> my idea of the future. <laughs> <laughs> no internet. Just thoughts, man. Uh, what would I ask them? 150 years. So if you think 150 years ago, just the end of the 19th century, so sort of middle of Queen Victoria's reign, come a long way, haven't we? What would they think now? Fucking blow their mind, wouldn't it? Um, could I just say, what's it like? <laughs> but when you go, how long have you got? <clears throat> I go, well, well, you've got all the time in the world, haven't you? You're a time traveller, so fucking you whinge. We would he? I wonder if he'd know. He's come to me, so he's probably looked me up, hasn't he? So he'd probably know when and how I died. I'd say, is there anything you want to tell me? And like he might say, yeah. Don't cross Tottenham Court Road drunk on the fifth of June, two thousand and twenty-three. And I go, oh, okay. You know what I mean? He might. He might. <laughs> <laughs> I might, I might try and get him to give me some cryptic clues. <laughs> like, is there anything I should do today? And he go, yeah, check your prostate. I go, right, okay. So, you know what I mean? I might do that. Um, I might just go as the prime minister, and he go. So I go, oh, I've never heard of him. I go, I know. What would you ask that for? I go, no, I've wasted a fucking question then. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're running out of time here. That was a great question. Is Dave, to bring the tone down, would you rather have fingers for nipples or nipples for fingers? Well, what the fuck would I do with nipples for fingers? I mean... That would be absolutely a waste of time, wouldn't it? So it's got to be fingers for nipples and just keep them to myself. Wear a little finger bra. Or just tape them down. Or, or could I have thumbs like that? So I could be reading the book and hitchhiking. That'd be good, wouldn't it? And I'd be, obviously have to be topless by the road, just reading a book and just hitchhiking like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, Emma, you've been taken hostage, of course I have. Someone has a gun to your head. The only way you will be allowed to live is if you sing a song from beginning to end. No mistakes whatsoever. <gasps> word for word. Correct. What song do you sing? See, that's so frightening. That's so frightening. Because unless you've learned the song for a reason, you'd, I just wouldn't be confident. Off the top of my head, um, well, the song that I, is ingrained in my head is probably um, a Jim Reeves song. My mum used to play an album sort of every day when she was doing housework and I was little. And uh, I think I've got it as well. I know, um, put your sweet lips a little closer to the fall. I think I know that off by heart. Let's pretend that we're together. Oh, yeah, I think I'd do that one. I think I'd, I think I'd nail that. Yeah, that's a good question. Worrying, stressful. <laughs> um, Freya, where do you get your inspiration for your stand-up jokes? Everywhere, just like this. A anything can, you know, think of all the shite we've come up with. Th th we could have had about nine stand-up shows from these bollocks things. Um, although I don't think cock in a drain would make the cut. That wouldn't have made it into humanity. <laughs> he didn't say it had to be good. But yeah, everything. You think of something, you watch telly, walk down the street, think of something, you, you know, someone said to you when you were a kid, and you, you know, you, you work on it and find the funny in it. And it can be from anywhere. It can be things that annoyed you, made you sad, made you happy. It could be anything. Depends, it just depends, but you can find the funny in anything. Um, Rupert, here we go. What's this? How would you describe yourself? What's that? What's that for a question, Rupert? Um, uh, I don't know. Fat, funny, happy. How's that? Or is that, that could be you, couldn't it? I could be describing Rupert. <laughs> um, oh, he's got another part. Monkey News and Idiot Abroad have to be two of your best shows. Have you considered writing a comedy show where an old codger travels to different churches to convince the parish there is an alter alternative to God? If you use this idea, I want my cut. Um, no, well, there are some shows like that. I mean, I think... Uh, People like Richard Dawkins has gone around discussing religion with religious people and non-religious people, discussing why people are religious. And, um, uh, but that's not my sort of thing. I just, I, I'm too lazy. It's like travels, the, the word travels, I'm out. <laughs> like this, can you sit on your ass in your house talking for half an hour? Not a fucking problem. Drinking beer and saving dogs, yes. I'm in. Can you travel to... No. I'm out. Um, uh, talking about saving dogs. We've got one more question. Oh my God, we've got one, I've got one more question. Joey, I can't leave out fucking Joey. Uh, thanks to everyone who voted for me um, on that who's uh, calling Christian thing. I think they decided... I think the votes counted um, tonight. Uh, if I win... All dogs matter, get 20 grand um, Australian dollars. Uh, and the person who told me to call in, which is some bloke on Twitter called Greg, uh, he gets 20 grand as well. I'm sure other people have told me about it, but he was the one that I saw first and called. So if you have voted, thank you very much. And if we win, that would be amazing. 20,000 Australian dollars to... Uh, all dogs matter. Cheers. We haven't won yet, but you know. Right, last question. Joey. <laughs> right. 
you woke up to discover that God exists, you're fine. And he's given you a gift. When you boop your nose, you become invisible. I love it. I love it. Thank you, God. It works for up to 24 hours at a time. I know there'll be rules. But you can only use your special power once a month. I love the thought that's gone into this. God. Right. I can give you 24 hours. Um, once a month. Uh, where would you go? What would you use it for? And why? <laughs> why? Why? What would you use it for? Why? Well, it should be obvious when I'm using it, for why I'm fucking using it. Um, just going to stand in a field. Why? Well, that deserves why. But if I'm like, oh, if I said, where would you go? What would you use it for? Well, I'd, I'd go to a bank and rob it. You wouldn't go, why? Would you? <laughs> why? To get the fucking money. Oh, Joey. <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> oh, right. I can become invisible. I'd save it. I'd save it until I wouldn't do anything. I'd save it until I was getting attacked by an angry mob or zombies. And they'd all, they'd all come from, and I'd go, Beep, and they'd go, oh, where the fuck's he gone? I assume I'm still there, but I just got to walk away. I, I might, I'm not even, I don't have to get naked, do I? I've got my clothes on, they go as well. <laughs> I won the rules, so I'm just invisible. Yeah, I think I'd save it. Maybe the last day of the month, I go, oh, I've got a, I've got a boop. What will I do? Oh, what will I do? See, I think about these things. They waste my life, Joey. Now I'm thinking about this. Uh, what's the point in being individual? Um, oh. What do I do? <laughs> it's going. <laughs> Someone is being mouthy in the street. Someone is being really annoying. Just go right. Go and punch them back. A waste of a superpower. What does he do? Oh, he, uh, once a month he goes invisible and punches someone in the face. <laughs> Good. Well, that was an absolute fucking waste of time, wasn't it? Um... Thanks for voting for me and who's calling Christian. Thanks for buying Street Dog. Uh, buy your glass from um, Beer Hunter and they give a pound. Uh, and I'll try and get this sponsored so we can um, get some serious cash going that we can uh, save some more cats and dogs. Um, I'll turn the screen that way, <laughs> get a nice mic, lovely light. Get some cash for me, give some to a dog, some for me, some to a dog. A thousand pounds for me, a treat to a dog. A thousand pounds to me, a bone for a dog. <laughs> <laughs> um, stay well, stay safe, retweet this, uh, and uh, be nice to animals. Tatty bye, everyone. Tatty bye. <laughs>